you may not know this, but I really like messing around with old technology, and especially like messing around with old computers, which is why I have so many of them. And so when I'm shooting old computers, I like to put the camera on a tripod in front of it for a nice stable video, but then when I'm using the computer, I tend to kick the tripod, which shakes the camera, which doesn't come out so good. So I got one of these, which is a camera boom, or a camera crane, or camera jib, whatever you want to call it. And so it sits on a tripod off to the side, so that the tripod isn't in my way while I'm using the computer. But it doesn't mount on a regular tripod because it's much too heavy. So I got a set of tripod legs, which this can mount onto, but it doesn't have any kind of swivel. So once this is screwed down, you can't really turn it. You'd have to unscrew it or turn the whole entire tripod around. And I looked online and a swivel or a turntable is kind of pricey. So I thought I'd try to make one myself out of wood and using traditional methods instead of using something like a fancy CNC. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So the first thing I needed was gonna be a Lazy Susan and I skimmed the websites of the local hardware stores and didn't see anything I liked. And so then I went on Amazon and I found a two inch Lazy Susan that would support up to 200 pounds, which should be more than sufficient. And the rest of the hardware I got at a local hardware store, which was just the, uh, the bolt, the T-nut, and some jam nuts that were nice and thin so that uh, I didn't have to cut away too much of the wood to make my bolt on the top. I used two different thicknesses of wood to build my turntable. On the bottom, I used around half inch thick plywood because the T-nut was only about 7 16 On the top, I used something around 3 quarters of an inch because I needed enough room for both the head of the bolt and the nut that I was going to use to keep it locked on. I marked the center and then attached both pieces together. I attached the two pieces together so I could drill the hole and cut them on the bandsaw at the same time and not have to try to worry about alignment later. I made this circle cutting jig a long time ago. It's just a scrap of particle board that has melamine on one side and I cut a slot down it where I have a movable pin. For this project, I replaced the pin with the bolt that I'm going to be using. I put the wood over the bolt to use as a pivot, and then I slide the whole thing into the bandsaw until the blade is about center with the bolt, and then I can turn the wood and cut a circle. I made the circle cutting jig probably over 10 years ago when I got a Pepsi machine and it was missing some of the cams inside. And since this was way before I had a CNC, the easiest way to make the circular cams was to make a circle cutting jig. I don't use the circle cutting jig often, but it has been really handy to have it around, which is one of the reasons I made it adjustable instead of having to drill holes every time you want to put a pin in a different spot. With my two new plywood discs, the next thing to do was to take it back to the drill press and use a Forstner bit to cut clearance for the bolt head, the jam nut, the flange of the T-nut, and enlarge the hole for the T-nut. I also marked the screw holes for the Lazy Susan and drilled those. The T-nut is just simply installed with a hammer. And the Lazy Susan is installed with screws in the corners. Now here comes the tricky part. When the first side is blocking you from putting the screws in. Well, what you do is on the side that's blocking you, you drill one little hole and then you can drop a screw through that and put it through the Lazy Susan and then turn it so that the hole lines up with the next screw and put the next screw in. Here's my turntable all put together. The T-nut's on the bottom and it'll mount to the tripod legs and the bolt is on the top and it'll mount to the camera boom. And here's how I had to put the camera boom on the legs before the turntable. You see it's kind of a hassle. I have to kind of stand out of the way and turn the entire boom around and around and around 
until it's tightened down onto the legs. So here's how the turntable goes on. All I have to do is screw it onto the camera boom. Then screw the turntable down onto the tripod legs. I don't have to spin the whole thing around and around and around. And this is a lot easier. It spins very nicely on the Lazy Susan, but you can see it wobbles quite a bit. What I'm going to do to see if I can fix that is I'm going to make a wooden shim that will fit between the two discs. That way when the boom tries to rock, the shim will be in there, preventing the two discs from squeezing together. To make the shim, I'm just going to trim down a scrap piece of hardwood, uh, in this case it's maple, little by little until I get it down to the right thickness to fit between the two plywood discs. I cut the shim into short pieces and then I glued them all onto one side of the plywood. Once I got it glued up though, I realized that now the other piece isn't going to be able to rotate because the Lazy Susan is square and it's going to jam up against the shims that I just glued in. Oops! That's okay, I'm sure I can figure out a way to fix this without having to start over. So the way I came up with to fix this is probably not the safest way to do this, but... <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the router table, and then I'm going to put the disc over the top of it and put a pivot point over the top of that, clamp down in place, and just turn the disc slowly to cut out uh, a circular area underneath it and just raise the bit just a little bit at a time and just take off just a little bit so that it's less likely for the bit to catch and try to throw the whole thing somewhere. I actually ended up doing this in probably five or six passes and the total depth that I needed to do was less than three-eighths of an inch. I don't think I took off more than about a sixteenth of an inch per pass. Right here is when the bit seems to catch, and I thought maybe it was because I was going the wrong way, so I went all the way back around the other way. But as you can see, what happened was the metal part of the T-nut that I left in there actually ran into the bit. I didn't think that the circle I was making was so large that it was going to hit the T-nut, so I left the T-nut there. Another mistake. So here it is, back on the tripod with everything trimmed up and you can see it's much more stable. It doesn't rock anymore, and it still spins very smoothly. So let's try it out. You can see I got lots of room here for my legs, so I'm not kicking the tripod. The camera sits low in front of me so I can easily see over it. If I need to mess with the camera, like in this case I'm adding a wide angle lens, I can easily just pull the camera around and it swivels. I don't have to try to move the entire tripod around. No problem sitting down, there's no tripod legs to kick. So here's the final result all put together. Uh, I added a screw here so that I can lock it down and prevent it from turning. I'm pretty happy with the way this came out, especially for something that I didn't have any plans for and I was just making it up as I went along. About the only thing I would do different if I was going to make another is I would do a glue up on this shim as one piece and then cut it on my circle cutting jig on the bandsaw instead of trying to do the, what I did with the router. But otherwise it, it works really well. It does exactly what I needed to do, and it didn't cost nearly as much as buying a commercial one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye, but just for now.
I may make some more videos later.